Question 8. Now the temperature of the chicken is removed from the freezer. Let's use some common sense. Huh? What is the temperature of the freezer at home? Zero. Zero uh. Has to be negative, right? If, you're, if the temperature in your freezer is zero, then water can also, also exist as zero, isn't it? Right? Because at zero degrees Celsius, there's a change of state from water, from liquid to solid, solid to liquid. So it can exist as both. It's also the... Okay, never mind. So, so back to this, our freezer has to be below zero degrees Celsius so that things can stay frozen. Now, when we remove it from the freezer, we expect the temperature to increase. Let's see whether it is true over here. And T is the time in hours since the chicken was removed from the freezer. Find the temperature at which the chicken is kept in the freezer. So for part one, when it is kept in the freezer, what do you think the time should be? T is the time in hours since it was removed from the freezer. So if you remove it for one hour, T will be one. If you remove it for two hours, T will be two. If you remove it for half an hour, T will be 0 0.5. If you remove it for zero hours, T will be zero. When you remove it for zero hours, that means it is still in the freezer. Okay? So you need to be able to interpret this. This is referring to time equals to zero at the beginning. So we are going to substitute this in here. T will therefore be equal to 20 minus 38 e to the power of negative 0 0.6 times zero. Now e to the power of 0 is simply 1. So we end up with 20 minus 38. 20 minus 38, that will be negative 18. So this is the temperature. Okay, now find the temperature when um, time equals to 2. So again, um, direct substitution. 20 minus 38 e to the power of negative 1.2. So use your calculator, get a value, and round it off. Okay, not going to spend too much time over there. Part 3. Now we want to make small t the subject. Let's do some manipulation. t equals to 20 minus 38 e power negative 0 0.6 t. I want small t as the subject. So currently it is grouped with my negative 0 0.6. It is the power of E which is tied to 38 times negative 1. So we want to isolate them slowly, step by step. 38 E power negative 0 0.6 T will be equal to 20 minus T. So whatever you do on the left hand side, you make sure you do it on the right hand side. E power negative 0 0.6 T, 20 minus capital T over 38. Okay, slowly I'm isolating our small t for time. So since it is in a power, let's take the ln on both sides. And we know that after we take the ln of e, it is going to be 1. The power will come down. Negative 0 0.6 t ln e will be ln 20 minus t over 38. Ln e, as mentioned, is 1. So to make small t the subject, we divide both sides by negative 0 0.6. So um, 1 over negative 0 0.6 ln 20 minus t over 38. The negative 0 0.6 can be expressed as a fraction. 0 0.6 is 6 over 10. Once you take the reciprocal of 6 over 10, you get 10 over 6, which is 5 over 3. Negative 5 over 3, ln. Okay, so this is what we have for part 3. Manipulation for our logarithm for ln. And finally, for part 4. Explain why the temperature can never reach 20 degrees Celsius. Now as time passes, we expect the temperature to rise. It will rise until it reaches thermal equilibrium with the surroundings. Let's take a closer look at the equation that is given for the temperature. 
So to say that, our temperature, capital T, is given by 20, take away 38 E power negative 0 0.6 T. The temperature is 20, take away something. If they are telling you that, if they are giving you a hint that the temperature can never reach 20 degrees, they are trying to tell you to prove that this will never be zero. That's what they are subtly trying to tell you to do. Right? Does that make sense? From the English. See, the temperature will never reach 20. In our, in our equation as given is temperature is 20, take away something. Only when you take away zero, then your temperature can be 20. So since you can never reach 20, they're trying to tell you to prove that this will never be zero. Are you able to do that? Okay, so let's start with the E power negative 0 0.6 T. E power negative 0 0.6 T where we have E as a constant. Now, you can check from your calculator the value of E by keying in E to the power 1. E has a value. It is a positive number 2.71 something something something. Okay? When you take this constant to the power of anything, you are basically multiplying this number by itself. That is if the power is positive, right? If we square it, we are taking 2.71 times 2.71. If we are going to cube it, it is 2.71 times 2.71 times 2.71. If we keep increasing the power, we will never get closer to zero. In fact, we'll go further and further away from zero. Now, what happens if the power starts to decrease? In fact, what if the power is a negative power? For example, e to the power of negative 1 means 1 over e. And keep in mind that E has a value of 2.718. 1 divided by 2.718 is still a positive number. Even if this value over here increases negatively. For example, E to the power of negative 100. This is the same as 1 over E to the power of 100. Right? That is the same as 1 over E times 1 over E times 1 over E. Now all these are positive numbers. When you multiply all of them together, you will still never get zero. So based on all this, we, can, we could have actually stated right from the start that e power negative 0 0.6 t is actually greater than zero. You will never get it to be equal to zero. But it will get closer and closer to zero, but not zero. Okay? Since this is always greater than 0, when I multiply it by 38, it will also be greater than 0. Then, when I take the temperature, which is 20 minus 38 e power negative 0 0.6 t, when you are taking away a value from 20, and this value can never be 0, then we can conclude that this will always be greater than 20. So for part 4, this is what we expect to see for your explanation. Okay, as time passes, after a long, 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 long time, our temperature will eventually get closer and closer to 20 because e to the power of negative 0 0.6 t, where t is very large, will get closer and closer to zero. We can use our calculator to find out. e to the power of t in a, a very negative number, let's say 100. We have 3.72 times 10 to the power of negative 44, which is really small, very close to zero already. So minus away 38 times very close to zero is as good as minus 38 times 0 gets very close to but not the same as right so that's our uh, question 8 now question 9 equation of a curve is given 
it is quadratic. I know it's going to be a parabola. In fact, it's a parabola opening upwards. Next, part one, find the values, set of values of x for which y plus 3 greater than 0. Do a substitution. This is our value for, this is our expression for y. So this 2x Two x squared plus three x minus five. This is our y. We add three to it, and it tells us that it is greater than zero. So that's one mark over only here. So two x squared plus three x minus two greater than zero. It is a quadratic inequality. We will have to try and factorize it. Two x x. Say we put a two over here and one. Two x squared. Two. Four x x. We want a 3x, negative, negative, negative. So 2x minus 1, x plus 2 is greater than 0. What this implies is that the quadratic curve looks like this, where we have negative 2 here and half. They want the region that is greater than 0, meaning above the x-axis. In other words, the range will be x less than negative 2 or x greater than half. So if we were to ever try and choose values that fall within these two ranges, x less than negative 2 or x greater than half, you plug it back in here we will have a y value right it returns us a y value if you add 3 to it the answer will definitely be greater than 0 that's what it means you can try the values if you want and quite obviously if we were to substitute x equals to negative 2 or if we substitute x equals to half into our original y uh, sorry into our original equation over here then Whatever y returns us, we add 3 to it, will be equal to 0. Okay? That's what the whole working behind all this is. Then for part 2. Part 2, we've got some key phrases. Rate. Increasing at a rate of 0 0.04 units per second, y coordinate increasing at 0 0.2 units per second. We have to interpret this from English to mathematics. The x coordinate is increasing at a rate of, in other words, dx over dt. Since they say it is increasing, then the rate of change is positive. So it's, we're going to be writing positive 0 0.04 units per second so compare the numerator units for x is units the units for time is second so here we have 0 0.04 units per second we also have dy dt 0 0.2 find the coordinates of p so apparently on this curve on this parabola You have to imagine that there is a, a particle that is following the path of the parabola. Okay, my starless is out of battery, so I'll just uh, verbally tell you what's going to be happening. We have to imagine that a, a point, a particle, is moving along the parabola, but it is not moving at a constant speed. They tell us that the x coordinate is increasing at a rate of 0 0.04 units per second at a certain point P and at that same certain point the Y coordinate is increasing at 0 0.2 units per second with these two definitely we don't have enough information yet whenever you see a DX over DT DY over DT what comes to mind? which rule? chain rule 
And to link these two, we need a dy dx, which the question did not specifically tell you to find. So you need to be aware that you need to differentiate the original equation with respect to x. And I'll continue on the board.